Hello everybody, I'm Steph, and today it Hello, is... Oh, why? Why? It's because I watch other streamers on my phone and then, it make, then I forget to turn my sound off. That's why. Um, I just wanted to say happy Friday. It's Friday the 30th of October, and this is Steph's HodgePodge of Gaming. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Hang my head in shame. Uh... <laughs> But, you know, I like to support other people, and it's easiest on my phone when I'm, you know, just hanging out. So, 30th? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, today I just, uh, I'm going to run through all of the games I've played all week. Um, it's been a very busy week, uh, full of gaming and uh, exciting new uh, playthroughs. We had a really cool live stream on Wednesday and last Sunday. We got in a few games. Uh, last week was Spiel, so uh, there was a lot of live streaming going on with BGG, so I got to check out a lot of games that way and talk to publishers and see all the new games that they were coming out. Uh, so it was very busy last week, so I didn't get in much gaming last week, but I do still have a lot of reviews this week because even amongst all of the craziness, uh, I've been managing to play tons and tons of games, and it's looking like I will get about 60 new games played in October. I still have today and tomorrow to learn more games, so who knows what else is going to come out, you know? Like, I'm, there could be, like, I could learn 10 games between now and tomorrow. I mean, things could happen. <laughs> Michael, let's play some games. <laughs> uh, hey, Iron, welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know if I'm gonna walk past 500 new games, but it will it will be easier than some other years where I have reached 500 new games, which I've I've reached 500 several times. Last year was 450 new games, uh, so we were pretty close. But it involved a month of moving, and so there was a whole lot of games not being played. Um, I've way passed the number of uh, games that I've played this year from like any other year. I'm already at like 1,400 and something new uh, total plays, uh, 1,450 or something. I don't know, something like that uh, for this year. There's tons of gaming that's been happening this year. Uh, so I'm definitely not, th that's probably the most games I've played in a year is, is this number. It's just been a crazy number of total plays. So it's been very good in terms of that. I don't know if I'll walk into 500, but once I hit 500, I think I'm going to stop. And then we could play like all of the legacy games, <laughs> just not learn anything until, until 2021. And then we'll start new in 2021. So uh, yeah, <laughs> but there's so many legacy games that, you know, we, we played like the first game or something. So it's like, I want to keep playing. I want to play the pandemic legacy. I want to play, um, what was the other one? Oh, Aeon's End Outcast uh, campaign. I want to play another Pathfinder on the stream. I want to just do a whole lot of things. So we haven't played Pathfinder in a long time. And it's sad because we were playing that like crazy like, we had, we had played that so many times last year, Michael. We played all of the different Pathfinders, and now we have scenarios that we can play, so let's do it. And I want to play, I want to play Mommy's Mask again, so I definitely want, I definitely want to do that. So, it's on my mind, things of, things I want to do, um, but as it stands, uh, we have a lot of new games still coming in. I'm, thankfully... Probably, thankfully, for Michael, anyway. Uh, the new games that uh, showed up at my door uh, this past week is a lot fewer than the past few weeks, which have been, like, stacks of games. Uh, so it's only two stacks right now uh, for, for today that I'll go through at the end uh, with everybody, with my the games that I just got and that I'm excited to check out. So sounds good, but I, yeah. Well, you know, I got a lot of new games, but, you know, it's still, I'm at, like, what, 420 new to me games, so I still have to learn 80 games before the end of the year, so we still have a, it's not, I, like I said, I don't think I'm going to walk into it, but we still have to do the work of playing all the games to get there, and that's 80 games, and that's the shelf right now. It's 80 games on the shelf, right? It's good info. 
Uh, easy, easy, easy. No problem. No problem. No problem. Um, <laughs> welcome, Book of Nerds. Welcome. Hi, Derek. Got the hype train rainbows going on. I love it. I love it. Love it all day, every day. Rainbow trains. <laughs> Um, I do want to, before I start talking about all the games I've been playing, which is ever so much, but I just wanted to mention, yay, 2021 calendar, I'll be shipping it out next week, starting next week, um, and if you didn't back the Kickstarter, that's fine, you can still, uh, check out my website, um, I'll get a link for you, um, unless Michael can find it in time, but, uh, yeah, it is available on the regular, um, on the regular store, on my regular store, so if you missed out and you want to, uh, buy one you can still do that and i'm starting shipping next week for all the kickstarter backers who have already backed it and um yeah so i'm excited for that i'll probably mention that again at the end hi charlotte welcome welcome uh thank you michael for putting that link uh, michael threw in the link for steps awesome gaming calendar 2021 in case you missed it or you want to you know buy some more buy some more coasters <laughs> Charlotte, you're not the only one who bought a few coasters. Uh, somebody bought 14 coasters. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of coasters. Uh, maybe they'll hand them out to some friends or something. I, I don't know. That was a lot of coasters. Like, wow. <laughs> People who want coasters really want coasters. That's what I'm saying. But they're like little promo coasters, right? So they're like, they're. I mean, they're usable and I've been using them and they're great. But um, they're just, they're a little bit thin for my liking. That's why they're only a dollar in the store and that's why... You know, I will I will be making more of a hopefully better quality coaster, and I'll be adding those later. And there'll be different pictures, too. I just figured the dice one is, is pretty rainbow and generic. People generally like dice, so, you know, it's, it's games, you know. <laughs> I'm very excited about the coaster, says Charlotte. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um... So I see there... I see the chat from the last stream... That's weird, right? I don't know. Is that weird? I don't know. I thought I thought the chat like always cleared every time, uh, every time you reload a page. Uh, but if you still had the page up from the last time, then maybe not. Then you'll still see the last time. So if you just leave the page up. Welcome, Silver. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Happy to have you here on this lovely Friday. I'm, um, I'm a little bit late, but that's fine. We had a BGG meeting about all of, like, the cons coming up and everything. So, uh, and what to do for 2021, etc. So, it was a longer conversation, but there there is a plan in motion, which, you know, I'm not going to share at this time. But it was cool to, to meet and have everybody's opinion on everything. Um, and if, you, if you're a part of BGG at all, like, uh, just the website, they, he sent out a big survey to everybody to see who... Uh, watched the live stream during Spiel and had a bunch of follow-up questions. So if you want to help BG out, BGG out, you can fill out that survey. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah, I sent Derek some coasters, and he he got them, and he loves them. So that's good. I'm glad you love them. I wasn't sure uh, what your, your opinion would be on that. So uh, it's good to hear that, because I didn't, I didn't hear that you that you saw those. So I forgot. I, I added a few in there for you. Um. <laughs> that is odd, Charlotte, but maybe it's telling you something that you shouldn't go to bed so early. <laughs> oh, that's why I recognize you. Hi, Steph. I love your work with BGG. Well, thank you very much. Of Dice and Men. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I love working on the BGG streams when they have conventions and everything. I mean, I love talking about games, obviously. And that's why I'm like, I think I need to start my own Twitch channel and just play lots of games. And so uh, Michael and I play games on Wednesdays every night, uh, on every Wednesday and every Sunday night. And we try and play three games. Sometimes it ends up being six games. Like Wednesday, we played six games. Like, because we... We were we had Mojo and we were like yeah let's keep going let's keep going and um, it was really cool so we had a good night of a lot of games <laughs> and uh, so Wednesdays and Sundays starting at 5 p.m. and usually Fridays I have my hodgepodge where I just talk about games for like an hour uh, and that starts at 2 p.m. except today because I had a meeting so <laughs> so I, I I came on when I can when I could. Um, 
Uh, in Argo. Yeah, my collection is seriously blow. Yeah, I have a large collection. So a few weeks ago, I don't think it was last week, it was two weeks ago, I did a full tour of my collection. I walked around and did like a five minute like, these are all the games and these are the sections of games that I have because I have like a, a sale closet. I have a, you know, games that need to be played shelf. I have a, uh, the whole kitchen are basically games that I haven't played. And so then this wall here is like seven shelves of games and it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's, I think it's like 1700 games, not including expansions or something. I don't know. It's like crazy. It's like a lot of games. And I'm like, and I have like a list of like 500 for sale or something. I don't know. It's absolutely ridiculous at this point. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Michael had to twist my arm. Michael and Derek were like, just start your Twitch channel. Jeez, just do it. And I'm like, all right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This is what, this is what happened. Uh, so, <laughs> and now I'm here and I love it. So I've been having a great time. The Twitch community is fantastic. Um, I love, you know, meeting all the people and just interacting and playing games, you know. <laughs> so, um, there's Medici. Yes. Right up here. This is the French edition of Medici. <laughs> um, bragging rights. <laughs> Dang it, Michael. Just because you win all the games doesn't mean you just get to put bragging rights in the chat whenever you want. <laughs> oh. All right. Games I've played. Let's start the, <laughs> let's start the list. Oh, yeah, sure. Michael just like, bragging rights. Bragging rights. All the bragging rights. No. <laughs> I don't love Twitch, uh, but I'm very much enjoying your channel. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Even though you don't love Twitch. But, you know, you can let me know in the chat. <laughs> That's what's great. And that will recognize you. <laughs> uh, okay, so the first game on my list is... Mariposas. Hey, this game we're playing on the stream on Sunday. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about it or checking out the rules and watching us play, uh, you can join us for that stream starting at 5. That's what's happening. But, oh no, not that game. That'll be second. So it'll probably be more like 7 Central. Uh, but yeah, so Mariposas is uh, the new Elizabeth Hargrave game and uh, it's butterfly movement, pick up and... It's not really deliver, but it's pick up and make new butterflies and try and get points. And yeah, it's cute. I like it. It's colorful. I like colorful. Um, uh, it, I like it enough to show it on the on the, the stream. I think people want to know more about it, so I'm happy to feature it. Whether or not it's a long-term keeper, probably not. But I, I certainly don't mind playing it, and I enjoy... Um, and I have enjoyed the, the game that I've already played. So uh, it's kind of, um, you're moving these butterflies in each season, like, but the butterfly will die. So like season one after that, the, the one butterfly will die. So you got to make babies along the way and, and upgrade them to twos and then threes and then fours because every season they're going to die off a little bit. And it's just the journey of the monarch butterfly. Uh, and you're trying to go and then come back and try and get points for the different scoring goals. So it's very, it's fairly light. Um, yeah, it's nice. What's going on with Calico behind you? What's going on with it? It's a little out of focus, I guess. I don't know. It's... I'll move it. Maybe it'll make you feel better. <laughs> um... I have the camera focused on me, so you don't look at the background. <laughs> the butterflies die. Yeah, because apparently the monarch butterfly always makes its journey uh, far north and then goes back, but they always die. They never make the full journey. They always die along the way. It's like a thing. I don't know. There's a whole history lesson in the box, so if you really want to know about the butterflies, they tell you all about it. Um, Michael keeps doing bragging rights. <laughs> Um, the Silver asked, uh, do you stream more new games or do you show older ones or out of print titles? Well, because of the timing of the stream, um, being Essen, uh, being October, where all these new games are coming out right now, I'm 
focusing my streams on the new releases. Now, I'm guessing that will change. Michael and I do plan to do some campaign games, uh, maybe making it an official uh, night that we play like five, six hours of a campaign, like Pathfinder or something. Um, so we do plan on doing something like that. Uh, but, you know, once I get through the new releases, there will be a lull where we're going to we're gonna take some of these other games off the shelf. There was a request to play Nippon, for example. So I still in the back of my mind where I'm like, okay, Michael, we're going to play Nippon. We're going to play it. So, he's, he, yeah, so he would actually get to play it because he hasn't played it. And then we will probably feature that at some point. Uh, and so, you know, I'm always taking requests. I don't really know what people want to see. So I'm just kind of going with my gut and people generally want to know about the newer stuff. So that's what we've been focusing on. But if you have, you know, a suggestion or a game in your collection that you're like, you want to know more about or something, you know, and maybe I have it, maybe I can show it off. Just I'm curious. I mean, I'm always open to hearing what people say. So, um, uh, the Highlander butterfly <laughs> makes the round trip. <laughs> I haven't seen Highlander, so I don't know. <laughs> that can only be one Highlander butterfly. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wanted to play last night on Earth for Helen, but she keeps avoiding it. Yeah, I do. I do keep avoiding it. Maybe tomorrow? We could do it on Halloween night, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's not like high on my priority list right now. Backgammon. I play backgammon. I think we played backgammon just the other day on a board game arena. <laughs> it's not out of the question. Um, so I did do one night featured with my, my friends Derek and Shrey. We played... Um, digitally and I had a live stream event of that to try it out to see how that went and it went pretty well we played Oracle Adelphi and then we played Hadara I think that's what we played <laughs> so that we played that on the live stream too so you know backgammon isn't out of the question I do have a backgammon set <laughs> I have a chat stream to moderate yeah did you put did you put the Mariposa's uh, link in the chat. I don't remember seeing it, but then again, chat's been kind of fast. Oh, back in. <laughs> uh, last night, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Back in was just so underwhelming. Yeah. It, I mean, it's fine. It's not bad. I get incredibly lucky with back in, so I'm not going to lie. I get lots of doubles. <laughs> All right, next on my list, well, after Mariposa's, uh, is bees, because we need more insects. Uh, we had the butterflies, and now we have the bees. Uh, so uh, we played bees on the stream, and that was, like, super quick. We did this uh, last Sunday. We played it live, and then I wrote about it for Monday's blog. Uh, so bees is a little abstract game from Next Move. And uh, it, it fits well within their line of like Azul, um, all the Azul titles and Reef and Tuki and uh, all, all of those cool games. So I think it, it fits really well. There's like a point to point movement where you're moving this bee around, collecting the nectar and, you know, making it into honey kind of thing. So in this point, the little point engine objectives that you're working on. So it's, it's a nice little abstract. It's very quick. Um, so, bees knees. <laughs> I stole that joke. Yeah, was it from Michael? <laughs> oh, the rainbow booger blob. <laughs> uh, so bees was really cute. I recommend it. Um, you know, I I don't. There's nothing like. Hey, thank you for following. Where's my little dude? Oh my goodness. Thanks for following. Um, 
I got the Rambo coming out of my ears. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it, it's good. I like, I'm, I like it. I, I don't think there's anything like new or innovative about it, but it's a great production value and it's a fun little game. So play it. Uh, we played a game called Duffers. Now I'm not into sports ball, right? I mean, I'm not really a big sports ball fan, but, um, my whole family loves, 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 loves golf. They all love golf. So, um, golf has kind of always been okay in my book. Uh, I've seen a lot of golf. I've watched a lot of golf TV, uh, which is probably like incredibly boring to a lot of people. Um, but <laughs> it's, I don't know. There's something strangely entertaining about it. I don't know. Maybe because I just, I grew up with it. So it is what it is. But so Duffers was a game that I saw, you know, getting, looking for a reviewer, so I wrote to him, and I'm like, yeah, I'd definitely be interested. I like golf as a subject, generally, uh, and it's a deck builder, so I love deck builders, so I want to check it out, and, and it works fairly well. This is, I haven't played a whole lot of golf games, but I haven't heard a whole lot of good reviews about other golf games at all in general, just, there just generally isn't, oh, that's the golf game to play kind of thing, uh, but now, with Duffers, I definitely think if the subject interests you at all, uh, it's it's definitely worth the play. I definitely would even recommend it if you like deck builders. I, it's it's pretty thematic, which is good. It's good. You are trying to build up your deck full of different clubs and different like like strokes that you you know you want to try and make the really great long shots in in as few strokes as possible because you're like golf. You're trying to get the lowest score. Um, and if you make the hole, you'll, you'll add up your strokes and that'll be your score for the, the hole. And so every hole has its distance value. And so if you get your hand of like five cards and you can make the range work that you, and you always need a putter to do the final shot kind of thing. Uh, and so you're trying to make it all work and you're pulling these cards. You're going to have some, some lucky cards that work in your favor. You're going to have some bad luck. You're going to have some like woof I forgot what it's called the I don't know like I don't know duff cards maybe it's called duff I don't know that it, it they're cards that will like make you have extra strokes so, like you don't want that or you know, give you a penalty for your shot or something like that and so it's gonna have like those different variations in cards and abilities and all these things that you can buy from the pro shop. So it's it's really it's actually a fairly good game and it's definitely one I want to feature on the stream at some point. Um, so hopefully we can get that played because nobody's heard of it. I want to just give it a little bit more light. Um, it's a cool game. So uh, you know I do want to feature games that nobody's ever heard of because I do have a bunch of games and I do enjoy a bunch of games that people just don't know of. Uh, so giving a little bit more light on, you know, out of print games or just, you know, under the radar games. Like, I don't know games that people don't know. I like to show those off too. So, um, you know, that's all on the, that's all on the, just, it's just, I gotta do it. Right. <laughs> And we got to teach Michael how to play. So that that's for the, you got to teach, we got to play with, I got to play with Michael so he knows how to play. And then we stream it. Because we don't want to go into a stream where we don't know what we're talking about. Um, where, so, and Michael doesn't like learning on the spot and stuff like that. So it just, we have to play it before the stream to make sure it all goes well. Um, <laughs> Michael teaches me how to play. Oh, look at this phase, Michael. Oh. Um, <laughs> Duffers looks kind of interesting. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. I definitely recommend it. Uh, they'll listen to me read the rules. No, I don't agree that having you uh, listen to rules, is, uh, read the rules is not, it's not an entertaining stream. So I don't think we should be doing that. Uh, but if I know a game, this is why I can solo some things and I can just do it. Like, I did a solo the other day of um, A Feast for Odin, and that did very well. People really wanted to see Feast for Odin, so I might just do that again. I love that game, and that's it's a game I will always want to play more of. So, um, definitely, definitely interested. 
Um, so just all, all, all the stuff. Uh, next on my list, we actually played last, what, um, like a week ago, Tuesday or something like that. Uh, we played Fado. Fado is an uh, interesting card game set collection. You're trying to get three of a kind, and there's four different things you could get three of a kind for, like the person, the color, the, the number, or the symbol of the cards. You're trying to make these sets to try and... Uh, collect these little tokens that have points on it. So it's a really interesting set, uh, collection type game. And uh, we played on the live stream and that was a lot of fun. We played that during the day where we played like seven or eight small games right back to back to back to back to back in like five hours or something. We played as much as we could and we had a good time. It was fun. It was really good. Um... <laughs> If anyone could make a live stream of reading rules entertaining, it would be Michael. This is correct. Hey, you never know. You know, make a podcast reading rule books in, in your voices and, um, you know, we'll post a little link and uh, people can just listen to you read the rules. It's easier, th it's easier than reading the rules. This is true. <laughs> um... Last, when did we play this? Last Sunday, I think? We played Deadly Doodles 2. Deadly Doodles 2. And I wrote about it the next day. And um, it was fun. We played with the stream, actually. So this was actually a game we did not play beforehand. Because we had played Deadly Doodles. And just Deadly Doodles 2 adds in new boards and a few new rules. Uh, so that was fun to play with the chat. And everybody who wanted to play along could play. And, um, it, I definitely think if you like Deadly Doodles, then Deadly Doodles 2 is a no-brainer because it adds six more, uh, levels, six, six more rooms that you can explore and play. And the base game just has one, so that's pretty lame. So, if, if this is a game for you, then cool. Uh, I, I like it. I think it works, it works fine. Um, it doesn't, like, stand out you know, amongst roll and write games for me. It's, it's fine. I think it works for like, um, you know, Oktoberfest where you're playing a lot of scary games and like all that thing. But I, I don't foresee playing it a whole lot or anything. Um, uh, but we enjoyed it. We had fun. So, um, Wednesday's blog. Okay. Wednesday was a big day. We, we, um, we had a lot of really great games. Um, we had a lot of great games uh, that we, we featured on Wednesday, starting with Under Falling Skies. So I wrote my big long review of that in the blog, and then we featured it that night. And so Under Falling Skies is a solo game, or you could play cooperatively. Michael and I alternated taking turns. Um, and it's uh, Space Invaders. I mean, these ships are coming in, and you're trying to take them down and take out the mothership. Get your research up to take out the mothership. So that's all you're trying to do before the mothership gets to the the level. And now what's cool about this game is that there are there are chapters and there's kind of like a choose your own adventure. If you choose one way, this this way is no longer legit. Though you can go back and do the whole thing again and choose different paths. Uh, but we've only played the tutorial and there's a whole lot of other... Um, advanced rules and as you go it's like a campaign so you're going to be exploring and doing different new things um the boards get harder more challenging and all that i mean the, the tutorial was already pretty challenging i mean we we, we got by just barely uh, we had a few rounds that, or that we could have you know made sure to do it and we would have done it but and we did do it so uh it's not like we had a problem doing it but um you know, I can see how it can get really hard really fast. Uh, so that's really cool. And if you're into solo games, I would definitely say, hands down, this is this is one to check out. Um, oh, Michael's showing off his Pokemon emotes in Rainbow Order. I think with the booger. <laughs> uh, I love them. I love them. It's so cute. Okay. Um... And then, what do we do? Okay, so then on the live stream that night, we did we played Blue Skies. Now, see, what's funny, 
after uploading all the videos to YouTube, Blue Skies has a lot more views than Under Falling Skies. So I'm guessing maybe people are more interested in Blue Skies. I didn't, I, I kind of would have thought the other way around based on the, the amount of chatter I've seen about Under Falling Skies. So, but that's good. I mean, um, Blue Skies is, you know, from my friend designed by Joe Huber, whom, you know, I've known since I didn't know what a designer was. So, like, like I've known Joe Huber forever and um, since I've started playing games. And uh, so I wanted to feature that. We did get one rule wrong during uh, the playthrough, um, uh, which is during the government agency phase or whatever you have to shuffle all the cards together and people can choose to discard cards at that time as well from their hand so it is it is a, a rule that we missed but um uh that's okay next time we play we'll play correctly now i know the things you learn government assistance thank you i did i well everybody gave me a problem was like joe you're not calling him joe joe uh, huber joe huber no it's it's always Joe H, and but you know, just wanted to be clear. <laughs> Don't give me a hard time. Stop it. I'm a good person. <laughs> uh, what else? Okay. Uh, in Wednesday's blog, I wrote about Seastead. Uh, this is a game I learned a few months ago. I don't know. Time is like what I don't know whenever anything happened anymore. But it was still in. Um, production mode and it was on TTS when I first learned it. Uh, so when I finally got the copy in, in hand, I was very excited uh, to show Michael and he, you know, he had a great time playing it as well. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. I got my ass handed to me though. I mean, Michael absolutely destroyed me. Um, so uh, <laughs> that that it's it's a great game and the production's great. It's a little two player game. It comes in a little two player square box, just like all the ones over here. Um, so uh, I I would highly recommend it if you play two player games or in you know looking for two player games. This is a great great game. I have a feeling it's going to do very well during the holiday season. Um, oh yeah, I'm going to make a holiday gift guide for BGG, and I think that will probably be on it because I think. I think a lot of people will want to play this game as a two-player game. It's just, it's easy to learn, and the decisions are juicy. So I think it's a really great game. Uh, what else? We played on the live stream last Sunday. We played Finishing Time, which I wrote my review for Wednesday. Um, and that's the new Friedman Fries game. Uh, fairly good. I mean, it's better than most Friedman Fries games, which I'm generally not a huge fan of his his titles. Though I like to try them because he always ha he always has something innovative. You know, he's always trying new things. He's not afraid to, to like try weird things um, that are green. <laughs> uh, and so it was cool. And last week on the Spiel stream, I actually got to interview him, and that was a lot of fun. So. Uh, we played that um, at the end of uh, Spiel. They they boosted it over to me, and I, I we, we played through a game, a two player game, and it was a lot of fun. So uh, thought we got to show it off a little bit. If you are interested in this game, it is available in the BGG store, uh, so BoardGameGeekStore.com. If you wanted to buy that, and there's a whole lot of stuff in that store. A lot of updates that just came out. So there's a lot of things that you could want from there <laughs> now is the time to go buy from the bg store um let's see we played half pint heroes half pint heroes is a little card game um i wasn't expecting much because the art style isn't really my cup of tea but inside uh all of like i think the fives or something are whatever number was dedicated to board game designers. So it had like all the artwork were game designers, which is really funny. Like Friedman Fries was on there and everything. So uh, I thought that was really cool. Um, it, the Half Pint Heroes is a trick taking game that's kind of like poker style. So you can play whatever you want. You don't have to follow suit or anything, but you're trying to make these sets using like 
a flop of cards and your hand of cards, and you go until someone doesn't have cards anymore. And so every round you're trying to bid on how many tricks you think you're going to take, you know, and you can bid on if you think the other player is going to mess it up and not get what they want to get, that kind of thing. So it is cool. It's cool. Um, let's see. What else? Okay, so then that comes to today's blog where I wrote about um, Scribble Town. Uh, Scribble Town will be playing Sunday night. Everybody will be able to join in, and this will probably be featured around nine o'clock central time. I don't know. I don't. It's hard because it's going to be the third game of the night. I don't really know how long the games will last. It yeah. yeah. So it will happen. It will be the third game we play that night, but everybody will get to play with us. Um, so today, uh, Zach, the designer, um, he, he wrote on my blog, he's like, oh, wow, you're already writing about Scribble Town. <laughs> he's like, the Kickstarter doesn't go up till January. I'm like, oh, I didn't know there was, like, a time frame. Usually I just try and, like, I try and play my games. Like, if it's been on the shelf for more than a few weeks, I'm like, oh, my God, we got to get this played. Like, ah, shake, shake, shake. Because I, I, I don't like to ha keep things on the shelf for very long. I want to make sure to get games featured as quickly as possible. So, um, but when we'll play this this Sunday, and then we'll probably play it again uh, on the stream when the Kickstarter goes live in January. And so we can play it again and have that be featured again. Uh, and everybody can play. It's fun. It's a great little roll and write game where you roll four dice and all players use these four dice, um, but you're only choosing two of them to use on your board. And you're making this little town and you're trying to score points depending on the little clusters you make and the roads you build and all these different things that are happening. So uh, it's good. It's really fun. It's good. So um, solid little game. Uh, I, I wrote a review for King of Movies. Uh, this is a party game where players are trying to uh, basically create a review of a movie that they haven't seen and in the style of uh, Leonard Moulton. Uh, so I don't know his stuff at all. I'm not good at writing in that style. I'm not... <laughs> My reviews, if you know, are like, it's cute! It's so great! Ah, ah. This is garbage. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but I, you know, his style is a little different. But, I mean, we tried it on the live stream and we had a good time. We played a few rounds and, you know, we got it played, I guess. Because uh, you need three plus players and that's the only way we could play it. So I'm glad we could try it. Um, another one like that that we played immediately after was uh, Sweet and Spicy Truth, which I wrote my review of that. And um, that's, that's an easier party game to get played because it's simply draw a card you know, yes or no answer, and then you have to secretly answer, and everybody tries to guess what you answered kind of thing. So it's like, yeah, I don't know, just like, the, the the questions weren't that embarrassing, which is good. I thought it was going to be like, oh, no, not like, well, like, you know, what's that, Cards Against Humanity? I thought it was going to be like, more like, raunchy kind of but it, it was fine and it worked people everybody wanted to see these spicy questions and i'm like oh my goodness it's like ah, i get so i get so embarrassed <laughs> oh yeah uh michael mentioned the queen of board games is better than the king of board of uh, movies <laughs> yeah. uh which we we made up our own little game on the stream where uh you know we take one of my reviews uh that a game that nobody's ever heard of uh but i've played it that's that sort of thing we take that and then people can write their own review on what they what they think i said and then wrote on who who, who um you know whose answer is correct which i think is so much fun i mean we gotta make this a real thing i, I had fun with that anyway but <laughs> I'm like going down my, my games list. I'm like, oh yeah, that game. Oh. <laughs> what else did we play? We played Playing Possum. This is this is just it's barely a game. I suppose it's a game, but it it you have three cards. You have an angel possum, you have um the the thief possum that's trying to steal the garbage, and you have the you're caught possum. So 
If you play the Yurkot at somebody who is trying to steal, they're out. Then the game's over. Done. <laughs> if, if that person has an angel, uh, then he's fine. And you keep you play another round. Or if you both play, you know, grab, you both get some food from the garbage. And you're just trying to collect this little these little food cards. I mean, there's not much to it. It's really, there's no, like, strategy, really. I mean, there's just... It's just like a quick card game. It's like super fast. I think Michael and I played like three rounds of it or something. I don't know. It wasn't It wasn't very good. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's, a, it's not going to be very highly ranked on my new to me blog on Monday. <laughs> hey Dan, welcome to the chat. Snow is mostly down now. Lots of snow up there. Yeah, I saw some pictures of snow in the northeast, so... That's good for you. That's good. <laughs> no snow here. <laughs> um, and the final game I talked about was Boomerang USA. And we played that on the live stream on Wednesday as well. So we got in a bunch of games on Wednesday. I love Boomerang. I love the, the original game. I love all of the revamped editions. I mean, the only complaint I have is that the sheets are really small to write on, but... Other than that, the game is amazingly fun. I always have a great time playing Boomerang. Uh, the U.S. edition, the U.S. rules have the old Boomerang rules attached to it, and then the the new Australia and the new Europe have a slightly changed rules where uh, the Boomerang uh, scores a little differently. The the actual Boomerang mechanic in the in the game scores a little differently, but that's okay. Um, and that's all good. I, I'm excited to play the other ones just because I love, I want to see all the art. Um, the art is gorgeous in the new editions of Boomerang. So I have all three of those that I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's really highly ranked on my new to me. I'm counting it as a new to me, even though it's not really new to me, but it is, it's, 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 it's its own entry in BGG. Therefore, it's going to be its own entry on a new to me blog it's it's rated highly. I really love that game. So it's it's a game I'll always want to play because I love drafting. I love the the challenge of trying to get the sets of several different things. I mean, it, the game's really nice for me. I, I mean, it hits a lot of points that I like. Derek's like, you are sounding raspy. I'm like, I've been looking at my drink too. Mm -hmm. Looks like images are having a problem on BGG. <laughs> Enough to be annoying is a very Dan thing to say. That is a very Dan thing to say. Yes. That link was from playing for, yeah, Michael. The Boomerang USA was not the correct link, but that's okay. He'll fix it. He'll fix it. But yeah, that 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 is that's my full list of games that I've played this week. Uh, there's a lot more coming next week because I already, yeah, I've already started writing um, the new to me blog, which is about sixty games. It's like really long, and I'm sure I could get it past sixty games if I really tried. I have tomorrow, <laughs> Michael. Let's play some games. Let's play some games. Games. Uh, fortunately, last night, uh, I got one of my three-plus player games off the shelf, so that was good. That, that will show up in a blog at some point. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> uh, what else? Let's see. I have a pile, okay, a couple piles of games that I, um, that I, that I got. So let's, let's talk about the, the new games that came so many great games. Ah! Alright, what stack should I do? This stack over here or this stack right here? I'll do this stack. Tea Order Cafe. We played this one. I've already played this one. I liked it. I don't know if there's anything notable about it, but I didn't mind playing it. 
Uh, this is the refill edition. I don't know if it's a different edition or if it's actually like, if it's its own thing. Like, if it's a standalone. Because I don't have the base game. I do now have refill though. So, I rated it a five. It was fine. I remember. I mean, that's what I said. I said it was fine. I haven't played refill though. So if it's a standalone game... Maybe he changed it. With the new refill edition, you can play a game with up to six players and you get the new refill cards. These return a tea or coffee back to your hand or bring an extra point on cake sets. You must flip your refill card after every use. Thank you. So maybe that helps. It sounds like, I, I mean, I agree. I don't, I don't think more players is what it needed. That's just, this is true. Yeah, I got two tins. I don't know if one of them is the German edition and one of them is not. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much. New cards might be good. Yep. Also, I got a whole bunch from, from, Ostia. So I'll just kind of. They got the new. This is the new. This is their new release. Is the no, Novgorod. Novgorod. And then we got Riga. And uh, I assume you've played this one, Dan. The Blendes Hun. You could open the bag. I can't open the bag. That's like way too much work. <laughs> Eventually, Ostia will have a game for every city in Northern Europe. So it's not the Michael Sh 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 Gat. I feel like I'm saying his name wrong. But um, it's uh, it's the Hike Hikey Wrist House. Anyway, it's the second edition of this one. And Joe, Joe R. has played the original one. So I assumed you've probably played uh, the original one. I don't even know what blinds hun means. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I'm guessing blind chicken. <laughs> ah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for all the links for all these games. Um, I played this one last night, so one off the shelf. It was actually fairly good, but that will be a review coming up. Um, I like auction games in general, so that one worked for me fairly well. Um, uh, we, Michael and I have played this one, Talon. It was, it was interesting. I mean, it had some interesting ideas. I don't know, like, how much replay there will be but uh so the that was my ostia spiel pack of games and i've already played two of the five well i've played tea order cafe but yeah let's see i got ba -ba -ba, capital lux two generations this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. I love this. I love this. It's beautiful. I like the original Capital Lux. Um, I don't think I'd ended up staying in the collection, but it was on like that that fence. So I'm hoping, you know, with the re re revamp, maybe maybe they changed it a little bit. Um, I'm definitely interested in checking it out. I really, I think I think it could be a really cool game. Um, it's definitely better than Rebel Knox. Which was a different type of game, totally. But Capital Lux is fairly, fairly interesting card game. I like it. Is it in my collection? I don't... Maybe I still do have it. I don't even know. I'm trying to think if I have it. Michael's... Michael says it's in my collection. Or is it previously owned? I don't know. I have to look. I might still have it. 
Because seven point five is like is is a keeper. So I enjoyed it anyway. Whether or not if it will stay in the collection after this game, I don't know. I don't know if there's room for both. But this is a huge game, so the other one is very small. So I don't know. I'm I I think it's I think it's interesting. So I I'm I'm very excited to try it. Um, does it play two players? Oh, it plays one to four players. Nice. Well, that works. You can fit both of them in that box. Exactly. That box is, is large. Um, I just got Baron Voodoo. Wow, this looks... I haven't even really spent time to look at these, the what I got. But um, two to four players. It looks interesting. I mean, it looks like sort of abstract, so Michael's not going to be excited about it. But uh, it looks like also like dice. I don't know if they are dice, but they look like dice. 48 dice. So, yes. <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> they are dice. Baron Voodoo. 45 minutes. Woo! I like dice. Woo! Woo! All right. This one Michael and I played just before uh, the stream today. Uh, very colorful. A game of cat and mouth. Oh, my goodness. So colorful, I love it. And uh, this is a dexterity game. It, it's it's from the guys who did Clask. So it, the company that publishes it is uh, Exploding Kittens, and not that. But the d the designers or the the creators of the actual design it, it, are the guys who did Clask. So it's still a, like a fun game. Um, I I like shooting little balls. I mean, it's a it's a, it's a silly little dex game. Uh, but it's a great production value. I think it will do fairly well in Target. I, I mean, if people know it, but it is. I mean, it's you are literally shooting these little balls in these little cat paws. This is really cute. It's cute. Is that the Sparkle Kitty people? No. And uh, that's actually been, I guess, Michael mentioned it today that it's kind of like a ripoff of the Sparkle Kitty. <laughs> um, because it does look exactly like Sparkle Kitty. Um, yeah, it's basically a ripoff. Um, but the gameplay is totally different. This is a dexterity game. I don't believe Sparkle Kitty is a dexterity game. But again, I haven't played it, so I don't know. But there's a cat spewing rainbows. <laughs> the same thing. Um, yeah. Totally sucks to do that. Yeah, I don't know why they would do that. Um, but... Hey, that's one more game off the shelf. And... Uh, it was fast and fun. I liked it. Michael didn't like it. He's like, no. And I'm like, I like it. But. Whatever. I, I like the little pot. I like, I think it's cute. Whatever. <laughs> I got this cool game called Cloud City. Not Clown City. <laughs> it is Cloud City. Um, it looks cool. We'll probably feature this at some point. Uh, I wish it were brighter colors. It, the colors are pretty lame. I, I think it's like a fairly lame like color set. I don't know. I just Nothing about it is attractive to me. But I like city building type things and it, the whole game itself looks really cool. This is, yes, this is by Phil um, Walker Harding. Yep. Right there. Um, so yeah, this is the one. I think Shrey got to play it during Spiel. He got a demo of it and uh, he seemed to like it. So that's, that's actually good because he doesn't like abstracts like Michael doesn't like. So I'm hopeful that Michael will like this one and that, you know, we'll put it put on the stream at some point. Um, yeah. It does look cool. I can hear a little plastic inside. So you're like building up this like making these connections and some things are taller than other things and I have no idea how it actually scores or works at all, so that, that'll, I'll figure that out. More from Blue Orange. Uh, 
a photosynthesis expansion. I'm excited. I I was like, I've always liked photosynthesis. Um, this is a game that I just get. I I like it. Uh, most people I play with aren't as thrilled with photosynthesis, but maybe. The expansion will add some cool new things, and uh, Michael hasn't played photosynthesis, so we have to get him to play the base game, and hopefully then he'll play the, the, the expansion. Or maybe we'll just throw him into the expansion, because I don't think he's going to want to play it a second time. <laughs> um... <laughs> We're just going to throw you in, Michael, in with this expansion. Um... Or if, or if the expansion's available online, I can make uh, Derek play with me. <laughs> uh, and then you wouldn't have to. But uh, I, I really like Photosynthesis. Uh, this is a game that stayed in the collection and will stay in the collection because I, I still enjoy it. I think it's a cool game. He doesn't like abstracts, but he doesn't mind if the theme is there, and it's kind of thematic, right? You're putting the sh the, the, the seats down, and uh... yeah, I know nobody's a fan of this game, but me. And looks like Derek says he does like it. The theme is kind of there, sure. Yeah, I know Joe Huber hated it. I know, I know, I know everybody. Uh, also from Reported Games, this is probably my most anticipated game of the stack, even though I have a few really good ones coming up that are, like, really great, that are gonna be really, really great. <laughs> but, um, we have the Magnificent Expansion! Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> Let me contain myself! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, I didn't even open it yet. It came unshrinked. Yeah, un not in shrink wrap, but more dice, more boards, more tiles, more cards, all the good stuff. I'm excited. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what it adds, but I'm excited. I just, I want to play it. 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 Um. Yeah. So um. The theme is dropping seeds. Woo! <laughs> yeah, photosynthesis. I, I'm not going to say that you're going to be sold by the theme. I'm not going to say it. I just, I know you're not going to be thrilled by it. But I'm hopeful that you'll still enjoy it. Because there's some interesting choices to be made. It's it's, a, it's an interesting game. I like it. I really like it. Uh, photosynthesis. But I'm very excited for the magnificent S-N-O, whatever that means. I don't know. Snow. <laughs> um... Yeah, see, even Shrey doesn't know how to pronounce the expansion. I don't know. Snow. I don't know the correct way of saying it. Uh, there's a line through it, so does that just mean it's sn? <laughs> I don't know. Snow. Uh, probably uh, the second most excited game in my stack that I'm, a I'm excited to play is Maple Land. Uh, I love the idea of this game. Uh, obviously, I love theme parks. Anything with theme parks I want to play. Uh, Maple Land sounds, it just sounds fun. It just sounds fun. It looks like you're buying buildings, building up your little park, your theme park. I don't know, what more could you ask for? It's just fun, okay? This will definitely be on the stream because I already know I'm gonna like this one. Like I, I know I'm gonna like this one. Uh, so you're building, you're buying these buildings and putting them in your little park there. Hey, I don't know much about it, but I want to play it. I'm very excited. Just say snow in a Swedish accent. Got it. Yeah. And uh, the last game on my stack. It's so sad. It feels like fewer games, but. It's still a lot of games because I'm already still behind on all of the games that I've got to play. Uh, but let's see. This one, lots of, lots of talk about this one. But it is Beyond the Sun. This is a super heavy 
uh, box for for the side. I mean, it's not like a big box. It's not very thick or anything, but there's like, it's full. I can feel that it's full. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, Beyond the Sun, a new, the new space game from Rio Grande Games. Uh, it's been getting a lot of buzz. Uh, this is a first time designer, so we'll see. We will see. And uh, hopefully it's amazing and we'll want to feature it on the stream. That's the goal. It looks like there's dice. Um, tech tree, maybe. I mean, it, it looks like a lot's going on in the back here. I'm just, like, looking at the back. But um, there's player boards. It looks like you got some tech trees going on. And then there's a lot of, like, dice and stuff over here. I have no idea. I really don't know much about it, but... Um, Ken also wanted to say he wanted to come on the live stream so we could, like, have an interview with him after I play it. So, uh, we could maybe get that going and, you know, we could ask questions on all that stuff. Welcome to the chat, Wim. It's almost at the end of my chat. Um, but yeah, this is Beyond the Sun. It looks really good. It looks cool. It says 90 minutes, so it's definitely going to be... 100 minutes, so it's going to be a more in-depth game. Uh, it says two to four players, so... Hey, as long as we can play two players, it's all good. I think that's about it. I think that's all she wrote. Um, I mean, there's always things to talk about. Uh, Monday, I'm going to be posting my New to Me blog. And then Friday next week, I will have my... Top 10. I'll run down my top 10 uh, favorite games that I learned in October. I still have one more day to learn something, so uh, I'm still hopeful uh, that I'll learn a really great new game. But I doubt I will. I'm, I'm handing out two nines on Monday. That's a spoiler, but two nines. That's two super rainbow. That, that's, that's a lot. That's I don't usually just hand out nines, you know, like that's, that's, I don't even know if I've, I've, I've rated anything a nine this year. I probably have, but definitely not a 10. I haven't rated anything a 10. Um, but we also had a few crummy games as well. So with the good, there's some bad. So <laughs> it's a long list of games, a lot of middle Middle of the road games, a lot of really above average games too. So it's it's been a good mix of games. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be great. Um, Michael says new to me, super hot, super hot VR. It's been a good month. That allowed. That's crazy talk. Several eight point fives too. Uh, at least two 8.5s. So, yeah, it's been really good. Yeah, exactly. Michael's like, plenty of games that if I played any other month, it would have been the game of the month. Exactly. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes there aren't many that stand out for a month, but um, there have been a lot of good releases this, this, this past month. So, those are games to check out. Um... I think that's about it. I think that's, uh, I'm going to do, mention my calendar one more time. In case you missed my Kickstarter for the 2021 <laughs> calendar, uh, awesome gaming calendar, uh, you can you can now order it on my website. And if you did back the Kickstarter, I will be fulfilling uh, those orders starting next week. So make sure you finalize that order with me so I know your address and everything, and I will get that shipped out to you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so everybody should have their calendars in time for holidays if you're, you know, gonna buy them as gifts or anything. Um, yeah. Let's see. Did that. When Sunday we're going to be playing Paleo, followed by Mariposas, followed by, uh, Scribble Town, which everybody will be able to play Scribble Town. So that will be Sunday's stream. Next Wednesday, I don't think I have it planned out that far in advance. But if I get some of these played, maybe Meeple Land. Um, 
I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. So if you want to see some 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 of these games, uh, maybe we can get that going in the works. Uh, but I just need to like make it there. Then we'll see what games are played over the weekend, and you know what's going to be really exciting to to play. Um, uh, let's see. The Shadow Network Kickstarter is coming to a close, but it looks like it's not going to fund without help. So if you guys liked that stream of Shadow Network, uh, Michael and I support the game. We really we 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 enjoyed playing it. Um, I think it's a really great game. So I, I'm hopeful that they will fund in time. Um, you know, it's sad to see a cool game like that just not getting much traction at all. Um, do you have an idea if the number of new games is less than normal? Uh, the number of new games in general is probably less than normal, uh, just because of production and everything's delayed and everything like that. So tons of, uh, publishers have a lots of delays in general, but, um, for me, it's a lot more. I've been playing a lot more than the normal months, which is usually around 30 to 40, 50. This month, I'm way over 50, hitting 60, 70 maybe if I play more today, tomorrow. Um, so, uh, if that's what you mean, Wim, I'm not sure. Um, oh, yeah. Thanks, Michael. He put in the link to my uh, store where you can find uh, the calendar if you're looking for a cool gift idea it's for a gamer. Uh, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Uh, I also have a few coasters left <laughs> if you want a promo coaster, which Derek said he really liked. So that's really cool. Um, <laughs> let's see. Everyone delayed until Essen and now the games of Game Avalanche. Yeah, so I think they got like their pre-copies out to some, um, to some people like me, but like even still, like bees is not yet available, but it's on pre-order. Um, I'm not sure. There's, there's like a whole lot of titles that are just been like delayed or like the release is being delayed. So, hmm, it's not what he means. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's still a bunch of games. Uh, I mean, so. I'm really excited for Praga, so that's probably the game I'm most excited about. Whenever Rio gets that to us in the States, I'm going to be, like, all over it. So, I'm very excited for that one due to COVID. With the new games being pushed out now where they weren't before due to COVID. Yeah, yeah, sure. I understand what you mean. They really can't afford to delay any longer. Yeah, I agree. Um, everybody's been kind of, like shut down and trying to get everything out right now so yeah a lot of good things to look forward to in the coming weeks um yeah i'll be in touch with everything that's going on i know on november 14th we're gonna have lucky duck games special day it's gonna be an awesome day um just to promote lucky duck and we're gonna play kingdom rush and we're gonna play Chronicles of Crime 1400, and we're going to have As in the Chat with us. We have a few giveaways that day, so I'm just making sure to tell people now. So plan. Um, it's going to be in the afternoon. It's going to be an afternoon stream because As is over uh, wherever he's located. Where the heck is he located? No. Oh, man, I forget where he's located. But he has a like cool like Scottish accent. <laughs> I know, I know he's not living there, but I, just, but yeah, he's, so he's on European time, so we're going to have it in the afternoon, so he can, he can join us, um, and we're going to have some giveaways for those games, and I'm still talking with the other publishers for the other publisher game days that, I, that are in the works, and maybe we can have more giveaways, hopefully, and, uh, if publishers are on board with that, that'd be really cool, and, uh, anytime I know something, I will let you know, <laughs> Cause that's what I do. I don't. I don't hold anything back. I spill it all. I spill all the beans. Newcastle. There you go. Shadow Network Kickstarter. 
Uh, they're, they're at 19,340 of 25,000, three days left to go. So hopefully in the final couple days, they'll get a few extra boost from people who are following it. And, uh, you know, hopefully they make their, their Kickstarter goal. Um, Newcastle, England. I was born there, Shrey. That's nice. That's cool. I don't think he's living there, though. Like, I don't think it's there. I think he, I think he's not living there. But I don't know. We can ask him on the live stream. How about that? <laughs> where do you, where do you live? <laughs> Cause Lucky Duck, cause Lucky Duck Games, they are. Does it tell me? Poland, but I don't think he lives in Poland either. All the things. I don't know. I don't know that. <laughs> Dan, do a better job. Jeez, you're you're very bad at stalking. <laughs> All right, guys, I think I am uh, done for today. I I have been talked out. <laughs> and uh, join me Sunday at five for Paleo. We're gonna play through uh, Paleo, the first game of Paleo or the tutorial. I was so proud I won the tutorial. And, and then uh, Hans and Gluck were like, good girl, that was, that was great job. I'm like, <laughs> I was so proud. And they're like, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> not impressed. Um, are we doing the pandemic stream? I have no idea if we're doing the pandemic stream. I still don't know. I don't know. See you guys Sunday. Yeah. Woo woo. Games, 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 games. Yeah, I need to get some games played. That's the, that that's the goal. I gotta get some games played, <laughs> and then we'll, once we get through the majority of the stack, then we'll start doing some off day streaming more frequently. I think. But um, for now, uh, I am Steph. Thank you very much for joining me. You are all very lovely, <laughs> and I'm always so happy to be here. And um, I'll see you Sunday. Michael gets bragging rights. You don't deserve bragging rights, Michael. Just, no. <laughs>